there are not many secrets in the world of Leica photography where passion becomes religion. Yet the lens that you will see today remains a curiosity for many people. And today I will unveil the secrets of the Leica Sumacron Killer. It is the 35mm f2.8 Leica Sumeron. Now before picking up this lens, I tried to do my research and found precious few reviews on YouTube that answered all the questions that I had. So I had to find out for myself and in, in this video, I will share everything I know about the Leica 35mm f2.8 Sumeron with you guys. And I'll give you some compelling reasons why you might want to choose this lens over the 35mm Sumacron for your street photography. Even though I haven't shown you guys a lot of my street photography, I absolutely love street photography and people photography. Guys, I'm down here in Union Square. There's a lot of people around here. Today I got the Leica M monochrome with the silent killer lens from Leica. This is the Leica 35mm f2.8 Sumeron, not Sumicron. This is okay. Alright, yeah, so this, this is a 35 2.8, so it's a stop slower than the Sumicron and uh, goes down to f22 right the goggles here originally meant for i think the leica m3 but it can be used uh, as you can see here on modern leicas at least on my monochrome here uh, it makes the rangefinder a little harder to see but i still can see it all right i still can use it and the best thing about this one with the goggles is that it's, it was a lot cheaper than the one without the goggles with the goggles, with a significant savings, I'd rather get this than the Sumacron because this is also a very sharp lens. All right, so let's take some shots. And they also serve a purpose, uh, which is when this lens came out with the Leica M3, the M3 does not have 35 millimeter frame lines. So it was necessary to uh, put these goggles on to correct the field of view. Now, one point of contention for a lot of people is this uh, infinity lock. So when it locks, you know, unless you're just shooting at infinity, it's, it's no problem. But sometimes you find it a hassle. At first, I didn't think it would be a hassle, but in real use, uh, it did become a, a little bit of a hassle. But as I got more used to the lens, it's not bad at all. But if you're new to this lens, yeah, it could get in the way. So I'm just giving you fair warning that you'll need to learn this lens uh, before you're comfortable with this infinity lock. And of course, the view in the viewfinder, yes, it makes the rangefinder a little bit harder to focus, but not not bad really, not as bad as uh, as you would be led to believe when you read when you read postings in the forums. Now, if you shoot with eyeglasses on, I imagine it might make life a little bit more difficult. So keep that in mind. But for me, uh, I wear reading glasses, but I don't wear glasses when I shoot, so uh, it has turned out to be not a problem for me. All right, well, I've shown you guys some nice shots from this lens, hopefully, but I saved uh, the best couple of shots for 
after this segment. So just hang on tight and we'll get to those. But I just want to say that I think this is a spectacular lens. And because I, I was so impressed by it, it made me wonder why this lens is so criminally overlooked. Do a search on YouTube right now and you will find precious few reviews on this lens. In fact, the best reviews, or actually not even reviews, but the best videos on this lens that I've seen on YouTube are pretty much photo walks with this lens. All right, now, of course, Leicophiles know about this lens and they love this lens. It has a cult following like other Leica lenses, but for the general public or, or even for some knowledgeable camera people, this lens tends to be overlooked and I believe that I know the reasons for that. The main reason, of course, obviously, is people, I think, overlook this lens in favor of the 35mm f2 Summicron, okay? Uh, the Summicron, of course, is a fa fantastic lens. It's a legendary lens, but so is this lens. I don't think that there's anything inferior about this lens with the exception of the one-stop slower aperture, but... As I've shown you in the photos for street photography, uh, general street photography, and even some night photography, as, you, as you've seen, uh, I don't think uh, this lens will hold you back in any way. And now, let me show you a couple of photos that I think will help you make up your mind as to whether or not you should be getting the Leica 35mm f2.8 Sumeron. All right, you guys, well, this image was taken inside of a restaurant with subdued window lighting. And uh, it was taken at the um, the minimum closest focus distance, which is just a little over two feet. And just like we did with the M monochrome review, let's take a look at the detail here. This is at f2.8. And as you can see, it takes full advantage of the Leica M monochrome's 18 megapixel CCD sensor, right? Now, I don't know how it would do on a 60 megapixel sensor, but I could tell you that uh, it, it's not being held back in any way by the monochrome's very demanding sensor. Also keep in mind that this is at f2.8, and the lens does get increasingly sharper as you close down the aperture. And I think the sweet spot is between 5.6 and f8 and at least on my copy the lens draws a more modern signature which means high sharpness good contrast uh, not hazy but yet it retains enough vintage flair to give it character okay and one last image here now on this seemingly unremarkable uh, snapshot. This unassuming image will tell you everything that you need to know about the Leica 35mm f2.8 Sumeron. Now this image was taken I believe at f5.6. Alright so here's a close-up of the far left and man when when light hits the face and it's captured by this lens this lens does something magical. It gives it depth. It gives it life. Okay so now we move to the middle of the image and right here you can see the high sharpness of this lens at f5.6 and just look at it's able to resolve you know whatever the M monochrome is throwing at it so, like I said I don't know if this lens is capable of resolving a 60 megapixel sensor but it's doing fine it's not being held back in any way by the M monochrome's very demanding sensor and lastly here is a small detail uh, from the right side of the image and what can I say folks take a look at that it's all she wrote if you can get this lens at a, at a good price get it and if you do get one based off of this review I would love to hear from you leave a comment and finally here is the full image again just for perspective all right so why would you get this lens over the 35 millimeter f2 Summicron well First of all, it's a lot cheaper, especially with the goggles. Now, as I said before, the ones without the goggles will cost you a lot more, putting you close to the Summicron territory. But first of all, 
with the goggles is a lot cheaper. Secondly, if you're shooting streets like during the day like this, you don't need that extra speed. All right, so how does this lens uh, do on color or color film? We just have to wait for another video to find out. But thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe if you know about the Sumeron or even if you don't know about it, but you, if you're interested in it, I'll answer any of your questions. I appreciate you guys watching. And until the next video, let's take a beautiful Leica 35mm f2.8 Sumeron, the Sumacron killer. Let's take a shot, a beautiful vintage shot of you guys with excellent modern sharpness. At the count of three. One, two, three. And I will catch you guys next time on the CameraLegend.com YouTube channel. Alright, that's it. Yo, it's Camera Legend.